this is the new Viva modules goals, engage and sales session of the business tech summit. Uh, my name's Nathan. I'll be the moderator. And uh, so as we go on, if you have questions, concerns, um, please use the chat and I'll be the one kind of answering questions, liking and kind of get into those. But let's go ahead and begin. Um, Brent, if you mind, just go into the, the next slide. So I just want to go over some quick housekeeping. Um, this is being recorded. You will have access to the recording as well as the slide deck afterwards. We just ask that you fill out the survey. All right, the surveys are really important for us. It gives us feedback, lets us know how we did, helps us plan for next year. So that way we can have more appropriate content that's based on what our clients and what people are more interested in. Um, if you are having some issues with sound or anything and need some help, please let us know in the chat. I'll do my best to get to it. If we're unable to help, we do have a email, so support at journeyteam.com. I'll go ahead and post that in a second in the chat as well with the survey. Once you do fill out the survey, you will be entered into two separate drawings, one for a $50 Amazon gift card, and the second would be for the Sapphire Surface Pro 9. Right, some good incentives, but we we always appreciate the feedback. Um, if this is your first time meeting with Journey Team, learning about Journey Team, or kind of learning more, a quick overview is Journey Team. We're a white boutique glove implementation partner for Microsoft. We work across the whole stack. We've been around for 30 plus years and um, been top 1%. Crystal Award winner um, with Microsoft. Um, but one thing that we do appreciate most often, Brent, if you go to the next one for me, please, is that 90% of our clients and customers are willing to be a reference for Journey Team. Um, I think that speaks more volume than any awards that we could win, right? We've been around for 30 years, so we have quite a bit of experience implementing a lot of projects, working across, right, the full stack. Can you go to the next one, Brent, please? Thank you. And then, yep, this is kind of where a gold partner, an award winner. The business applications is kind of our bread and butter. Go to the next one. But one thing that kind of separates Journey Team is we work across the stack, right? Everything's US based, all our developers, architects, and consultants. We have headquarters here in Salt Lake City, Utah, with satellite offices in Tennessee, Texas, and California, right? We're going to be going over. Right, we have teams dedicated to ERP dynamics, FNSC, Business Central, CRM for sales, marketing and customer insight, cloud and security, SharePoint, right? The power. Power platform, so that's Power BI, Power Automate and Power Apps, and then as well as customer support and licensing as a CSV provider. So. We're excited to have you here. Hope you enjoy it. Right. If you have any questions or comments, we'll probably leave those towards the end of the session. But I am going to turn the time over to Brent. Want him to introduce himself. Don't want to spoil the fun. But Brent, go ahead and kind of take over and do your thing. All right. Hey guys, I'm Brent. Brent Tenney. I've been with Journey Team for I don't know, close to two decades now. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been focused mostly around collaboration content management. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Viva. Um, to get started, I'm curious um, how many of you, so just the audience members, you can just reply in the chat, how many of you are currently using Viva? Uh, and if so, which modules are you using and uh, what's your experience been so far? So just let me know if you're currently using Viva in the chat or if you're just Viva curious at the moment. Oh, Viva Learning. All right. That's one of the newer modules. It's one that I like a lot. I was going to give a quick rundown real quick of the, the other modules we're not going to uh, touch on today in any great detail. We've talked about them in past sessions. I think Kip had a really good uh, uh, overview of topics today. Uh, so Viva Insight, Viva Learning. All right, so Connections is the uh, Viva Home, for lack of a better term. It gives you a branded 
experience that brings together news and resources. It's essentially your internet in Teams, uh, for lack of a better term. And it, it pulls together news from various resources and things like that. Eva Insight, Michelle, you're probably familiar with that gives you um, some productivity and well-being tips and analysis. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, AI driven um, and and looks at how you use uh, the Microsoft stack between emails and meetings and focus time and helps you find tips to be more productive and useful. Which let me pause there for a minute. Everything about Viva is about making your employees work more more productive and more enjoyable. So it's it's focused on your employee experience and helping them succeed essentially. Uh, Viva Topics or Viva Learning uh, gives you a integration to LMS systems and, and to, to training and, and uh, skill guidance uh, right in the flow of work. So you can use it from Teams uh, and, and you can get access to training. One of the features of learning that I really like is you can get, you, you can look at training by time. So you can get a little short if you got half an hour free. You can find a training module that fits within half an hour and you can go do that real quick and, and improve your skills just a little bit. If you've got a whole day, you can you can find a training that that, that fits that. So you can search for uh, different training materials by time, by type, by topic. Uh, Viva Topics gives you access to uh, some AI curated uh, topic, topic centers and topic pages, and they uh, pull in data from across your organization. They pull in people that are familiar with that data and they, they let you connect to it. And, and those become relevant on SharePoint and in emails and in uh, Teams, and you can you can connect to those Viva topics. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is mostly these bottom three goals engaged, and I couldn't find the, 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 a good version of the icon for sales, but 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 these three new modules that Microsoft released. Uh, Viva goals is an uh, a goal setting and goal alignment tool for Microsoft. And it's it's built on this uh, OKR methodology that's uh, quite popular and has been proven quite successful for organizations. Uh, so it's to help you align your goals uh, throughout your organization. Engage is the uh, evolution of the uh, Yammer community app, essentially, and they've added some new functionality. They're going to be adding some additional functionality uh, in the future that we'll talk about. But it's essentially the uh, the social media experience, the community experience um, within Viva. And, and then Viva Sales is an add-on you can purchase separately. Uh, and, and Viva Sales is all about uh, helping, it, they call it a role-based experience. So, so it's uh, targeted particularly towards salespeople. And it's to help them uh, ease the burden of data entry and uh, have more relevant context that they're engaging with their customers and, and, and potential customers. And uh, we'll take a look at that later on in the presentation. So, so that's Viva. They're, they're continually adding new modules and components to it, but it's all focused around uh, helping your employees uh, do their work in the most productive and enjoyable way possible. So uh, yeah, let's move along and dive into goals. All right, I saw this article the other day. It was relevant to what we're talking about. So uh, this was just on October 31st. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released us their, their findings for last quarter that um, US workers productivity had fallen by like the most it has ever fallen since 1947. Uh, it's, it's, it's this huge drop in productivity and they're kind of troubled and concerned about it, trying to figure out why ultimately it has an effect on kind of the well-being of all of us if we're less productive. Uh, and in it, they quote uh, Satya, and uh, he said his company has coined the term productivity paranoia to describe employers' anxiety about whether employees are working hard enough. And this is part of the results of COVID, but, but hybrid and remote work has gotten immensely more popular it, it, it recently. And uh, and there's this concern, this uh, fear for management that that their employees aren't being as productive as they could be, and that's kind of borne out by the data, frankly. Um, this slide came from Microsoft. They do a uh, a work trend index uh, study and report, and and this slide came from them. Uh, they say that 87% of employees uh, feel and report that they're being productive at work, but only 12% of leaders. Uh, have confidence that their team is being productive. That's this huge chasm, this wildly disparate uh, worldview between between the workers and, and, and the 
the leaders. And so uh, Microsoft has come out with this Viva goals module to help uh, bring those two into alignment to make sure that everyone understands uh, what the objective is, uh, what the key results are, that we're all working together to achieve those objectives and that uh, the work that we're doing is productive so that uh, the leaders can have confidence that the employees are doing it and, and so that the employees can have confidence that what they're doing is productive and contributing to the overall success of the company. That That's the, the real uh, objective or the goal behind Viva Goals is to make sure that we're all in alignment in, in doing uh, the right thing, not just uh, doing something. So this is a, a, a screenshot of the dashboard. We're going to dive into it in just a minute, but essentially gives a lot of visibility and transparency into here are the goals, the, the OKRs, the uh, objectives we've set for the company uh, and your team and your department and, and at the individual level. And then here's how we're progressing towards those. And you can see that at a real quick glance, uh, the key results roll up into objectives. They roll up. Uh, and as we update uh, the status of those through check-ins, uh, those results roll up. So we can see how uh, as we update each key result, uh, that's affecting the overall objective. And, and I can see how my work as an individual employee is, is contributing to the effectiveness and, and the results that I'm seeing at the company level, at the organizational level. So let me switch over to my demo environment here. This is goals. You can get to it by going to goals.microsoft.com if you've got the Viva suite, which we'll talk about licensing at the end. Uh, and initially presented with this with this uh, dashboard view of my OKRs. And you can see here I've got several and they're they're at, at different levels. I've got individual OKRs that can track just for me really. Um, team OKRs in this case, the user I'm signed in as part of the IT team. And there's uh, IT OKRs there and you can see that there's some underneath this OKR. There are key uh, key results, which are these metrics that I'm tracking, and then several projects related to achieving that objective. And then company-wide uh, or organization-wide uh, OKRs as well that roll up here. If I want to rearrange these, I can. Uh, if I want to view a different time period, I can. This is the current quarter, but you can change the time period and look ahead to what's coming, uh, for example, next year. See what the OKRs, OKRs are for that. Typically. Uh, I'm new to the OKR methodology. I'll, I'll, I'll readily concede, but but the, from what I've learned, uh, the the typical pattern is that the company planning starts the the beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, and, and planning happens at the company level for the for the upcoming year, and then at the at the team level, quarter by quarter after that. So so these are goals set at the company level, uh, or or objectives set at the company level for the upcoming year. We can go back and look at different time periods if we want. We can go back and re view results from previous time periods if we want to see how we did in past quarters. Uh, I'm just going to jump back into our current one. Q4 of, sorry, get back there. Q4 of 2022. And each of these objectives has roll up uh, key results and projects that are tied to it. Uh, the projects I have here in my demo are all standalone projects, meaning that they exist only within uh, Viva goals, but you can actually connect this to uh, various other project management tools. They've got quite a wide range of integrations and they're adding more. They'll be adding Microsoft Planner and Microsoft Project for the web uh, in the near future uh, as integrations. All right, when I... Uh, Let's jump into admin for a minute and see how we set this up when I first turn it on. Uh, so I can choose if I want to restrict access or if I want to grant access to everybody. I can add specific members if I restrict access and only give them access to, uh, to Viva goals. And then you can have observers or regular users if they're going to be making updates to uh, objectives and key results or if they're just going to be re reviewing the status. I add users, I can assign them to teams uh, and set their role. And I can configure teams with users here. I've just got one of IT at the moment. And then time periods by default are quarterly, but I can add custom time periods if I want of a different frequency, uh, weekly, monthly, uh, semi-annually, whatever I want. And there's a setting to change the uh, start date of my year. So if I want to 
if I was working off a fiscal year that started in July, for example, I could change that. And then uh, one of the key elements of goals is to make uh, the status a constantly at the forefront of your mind by reminding you often. So there's default reminder uh, for check-ins and for summary updates. And we'll talk about each of those in a minute, but I can set that schedule. So if I want to set it weekly, every two weeks, three weeks or month or or more frequently, I can set additional days. I can choose the time of day I want that to happen. And then I can allow uh, individual teams and, and users to change their check-in time if they want. Integrations, as I said, it'll integrate to teams. Evil goals can also connect with any of these uh, tools for project management. So uh, you can pull in data from your projects from here as you update them there. That data will be synced across every hour to the Viva goals relevant projects. You can see the uh, status reflected in your dashboard without having to go duplicate the data entry there. And then this is just some controls on how I want to structure it. If I want to allow, for example, objectives to be nested underneath other objectives. Uh, and then uh, I can choose uh, how they're shared out. All right, not the one I wanted. So my OKRs, like I said, I've got uh, organization wide OKRs, OKRs, team OKRs and individual OKRs. Uh, when I want to go add a new OKR, Pretty new objectives. Uh, it's going to be fairly generic data. Uh, when I do that, I've got a couple of options. I can delegate it. Um, I can choose who can view and align it, which is uh, how we make sure our, our objectives are in alignment. And I can add a description. Uh, the outcome, I can add a metric if I want. The progress is where we're at and whether this is going to roll up from key results or if I'm going to manually update the progress of this particular objective. And I can add some scoring guidance for how I'd update that project. And then I align it to a corporate objective if I want. Uh, in this case. Uh, we'll do it to our build a rhythm of business on Viva goals. So I'm going to create that. And then underneath this Viva Goals demo, I'm going to open the full screen view. Click in that icon there. I can add key results, projects, or child objectives. Uh, I'm going to add a key result. It's going to be uh, And here I can choose to either manually update this key result or I can automatically do it from one of our enabled data sources. The only one I've got is Azure DevOps and then I don't have any data in there, so, so I'm going to leave it at manual. But you can see how if I can tie my key results into existing uh, project management tooling, uh, uh, I'll be able to see my effectiveness towards the organization goals uh, as I complete work in my, in my, on my projects. And I can change the type. This one might be a team uh, OKR. And then, like I said, I've already set the alignment for that to uh, that objective. And then we're going to add a project as well. Just to show you the hierarchy here. All right, so here's my. Uh, I put it in the wrong order. Here's my OKR with my key result. And uh, so, so the they call it the four C's. The first one is create. I've got to uh, set up my, my OCR. And then as I work on this project, I have to uh, check in. And there's a button right here that says check in. I can check into uh, 
leave a goals and update my project or my key result. You can see it automatically uh, because I said I'm only 25% done and it's due at the end of the quarter. It thinks I'm behind based off of uh, just a burn rate uh, towards that. As I add check-ins and update it, uh, I can get on track. I can also manually update the status to something else if I think there's a problem, if it's been postponed or if it's at risk for some reason. And it updates my dashboard here. The uh, the OKRs will give me a a, a reminder to check in at the, the cadence that I set. Uh, in, in this case, it was every week on Monday mornings, and then it'll send out a summary uh, notification, a summary report of the status of that uh, OKR. So. Um, that's OKRs and then projects. Can be connected to, to OKRs. You can see uh, like this project is connected to the research and improve customer satisfaction OKR. And I can update the status of these the same way. I can perform a check in. Decide how far along I am, maybe only 10% and that project is. Uh, behind as I understand the difference between behind and at risk is if I've got a plan to catch up it's just behind if I don't have a plan to get caught up then it's at risk and then as I uh, repeat these processes I can clone them I can uh, I can align them to new goals um, I can assign the workout to different owners or delegates so I want to assign this to maybe Alan. And the, the real key here is that uh, there are frequent uh, regular check ins and regular cadence of check ins. Uh, towards these OKRs, and all of that rolls up towards the organizational objectives. So as I update these projects and, and key results, the OKRs status is going to automatically update so I can see that, for example, this one is behind schedule now because I'm behind on that project. Uh, the dashboard view, I can add different um, panels to it and, and, and focus on the, the OKRs that I want to see. Uh, or the or the projects that I want to see a status for uh, team members. I can see how they're progressing, how my team's uh, working and completing their assigned uh, project tasks and um, and key results. And then there's just some settings I can control uh, uh, who can see this. One of the the key uh, principles behind the OKR methodology is that it's very very transparent. That that I can go in and see. Uh, other users, management, uh, team members uh, progress towards their OKRs that I can see how Alan's doing, whether he's uh, you know on track or behind, whether he's you know at risk of of not meeting some of our objectives, uh, and it gives me a chance to step in and help him. But it also uh, requires or, or provides a level of accountability that I think a lot of people are uncomfortable with, frankly. But it's uh, been very effective at driving results in organizations that have adopted it. And I can see my team or my entire organization, see how my contribution is helping or hindering um, my organization towards our, uh, our objectives and key results. And I can follow. So I've got a feed that based on uh, key objectives and key results and projects that are assigned to me, I can either follow them, bookmark them, uh, they'll show up in my feed and I'll be notified of them uh, with that summary update report at the regular cadence. And then, like I said, Explore lets me go see um, the overdue OKRs, objectives for everybody, my objectives, um, 
OKRs have not been updated, some additional views. There are some that aren't aligned with any of our uh, OKRs or things have been completed. This is again that uh, aspect of accountability and, and, and transparency is that uh, by default, everyone can see everything uh, in the OKRs and all the progress or lack thereof. And in administration, uh, we already talked about all the admin settings. The uh, so, so the goals.microsoft.com is a website you can use to access Viva goals. There's also a Teams app. So within Teams here, there's a Viva goals app that I can add. And it's uh, uh, it's essentially the same. It, 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 there's a couple of the admin setting things that I have to do from the website that I can't do from within the Teams app, but it, but it gives me all the day-to-day -day updates. Uh, it lets me do the check-ins. Uh, if I want to, I can uh, perform a check-in. And then the third C is uh, as I complete uh, OKRs, I can uh, close them out and then I give it a score. And a score of uh, the score is zero to one based off how much of it I completed in that time frame. So uh, if I did everything, uh, I can say one, close it. The idea behind OKRs is uh, is that they are stretch goals, that they're um, not necessarily going to achieve everything. So uh, a, a successful range would be like a 0.7 to a 0.9. Uh, in fact, it gives one an orange indicator because uh, it's maybe a, a suggestive of I didn't stretch myself enough on this goal if it was easy enough that I was able to complete it all. Uh, if that makes sense. So. Um, can add it to my dashboard. That's Viva goals. Uh, see if there's anything else I want to cover about Viva goals. I think that's everything there. That's uh, kind of the overview. If there are any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll try to get them answered. But uh, if not, we're going to move on uh, to engage. All right, Viva Engage was the uh, the old um, community app for Yammer. So it's essentially a bunch of Yammer content that gets presented in Viva uh, in Teams and uh, uh, made accessible to users. So if you're using uh, Yammer, uh, this is a really useful module of Viva. If you're not, I'd encourage you to take a look at it. It is the uh, key to having team cohesion in our, you know, uh, geographically dispersed workforce that's kind of taken over recently. Uh, it's it's very helpful to uh, create connections, build strong teams, uh, build relationships. And aside from all the normal Yammer features, there's a couple of new aspects that I want to share about one that's available today and a couple that are coming up uh, in Q1 of uh, 2023. And so the first one is storylines. This is uh, essentially a chance to uh, share about yourself, share your thoughts, share your milestones, share your accomplishments, ask questions, uh, to, to, to be social in an online aspect uh, with your coworkers, essentially. And so in the Viva Engage app in Teams, uh, you've got your normal home feed that you're probably familiar with if you're familiar with Yammer and then communities, which you're probably familiar with if, you, if you've used Yammer in the past. These are uh, places for like minded or, or, or similar interested people to get together and, and, and work on things or share things. Uh, here at my company, Journey Team, our Yammer communities are 
largely social in nature. So we have like a, a wakeboarding uh, community and a rock climbing community and and a food club and a video game community and in those things. Uh, they don't have to be though. You can see here in, in our demo environment, they've got Yammer communities about uh, work oriented and, and task oriented things as well. Uh, but then storylines is this new feature they released. And it's a chance to uh, share uh, information about yourself with coworkers and across your organization. Uh, when you go to uh, make a post, you can choose to share it to your storyline and then anyone who has followed you will uh, get notification about your, they'll be able to see your storyline posts as well. Uh, and then as you as you interact with coworkers, you can choose to follow them and get notified about their storyline as well. If I follow Nestor, for example, when he makes uh, posts about to his storyline, I can receive notifications in these places in Yammer, in Microsoft Teams, and get an email if I want. I can choose to unfollow them uh, when I feel like it. The uh, the um, engage is essentially social media. Like Yammer was essentially Facebook for companies, and, and engages uh, the social media experience for for the corporate world, and so. Uh, I can follow people, I can create discussions, I can ask questions, I can praise them and, and send them uh, congratulations. I want to praise Alex, for example, for being awesome, give him a participation trophy. And Alex will get notification that I, that I uh, praised him. You can like and comment on that. And you can include other people as you do at mentions in Yammer. Uh, I can ask questions or polls. I could. Um, And post polls and, uh, and questions and get responses. And then uh, the storyline, all the things that I post in my storyline will be available for people that want to come and follow me and learn more about me and how, I'm, how I do my work and, and how I interact with, with others. Uh, the, the other two that are coming soon, let's flip back to the sides, they're not available yet in my environment, uh, are answers which is a, uh, an intersection of Viva Topics with Viva Engage. So it brings a, a social collaboration aspect to finding uh, information, uh, whereas Topics on their own is largely AI driven. Uh, this engages your coworkers to find answers and, and engages you to help answer your coworkers' questions. So uh, again, this has been released January of 2023 was the last date that I heard, unless it gets pushed. Um, but Viva Engage Answers let you ask questions. So when you click on the Answers tab, once it's available up here, uh, you can just type out a question, and it will use uh, machine learning to look at that language in the natural language algorithms in your question and find related topics. And it can actually take that question and go propose it to uh, people who are uh, experts on those topics and might have an answer for you. And then uh, down below, there's a questions for you. As the uh, machine learning has found other people ask questions that I might know the answer to, it uh, presents them here to me, and I can try to give answers that might help my coworkers out uh, and find an answer to their question that, that I may know. So that's Viva Answers. And then uh, the last thing is the um, the leadership quarter, which is coming again in Q1 of 2023, and this is a chance for uh, leaders to engage more with their employees. Again, it's kind of like a social media thing. If you're familiar with Reddit, they have like an ask me anything sort of 
tradition, I guess. And uh, Viva Engages Leadership Corner brings that option in. You can uh, hold Ask Me Anything type events uh, with your employees, with your direct reports, with others in the company, and let them ask you questions, interact with them there. Uh, you can uh, track your uh, status of uh, your posts and the engagement that you have with others, whether you're liked or followed or viewed, uh, how many impressions you have, all those kind of fairly standardized social media aspects now uh, to see how, how much your uh, how much engagement you're actually getting with your uh, kind of Yammer activities. And that's Viva Engage. Any questions about that? No? All right. Uh, Viva Sales, the last one. I have tried and tried to get a good environment that demos, that has both the CRM data I need and the Viva license, and I, I was unable to do that. So we're going to uh, look at some screenshots and watch a short video about uh, Viva uh, Sales. This is an add-on. So, so, so everything we've talked to up to this point is included in the Viva suite. We'll talk about licensing in a minute, but but uh, Viva Sales is a separate add-on. You don't get it if you buy the Viva suite. Uh, even if you're licensed for that, you have to still pay for this uh, Viva Sales add-on. And uh, it's, uh, like I said, a role-based experience geared towards salespeople. This is the first one that Microsoft's done, but they intend to add more to Viva. So uh, if this is successful, uh, I imagine they'll be adding uh, uh, more in the near future uh, for other roles. This one happens to focus on salespeople, and it's really got an integration to two different uh, CRM solutions at the moment, Dynamics 365 and Salesforce. And it'll uh, automate and use uh, artificial intelligence to streamline a lot of the process of entering data, of tracking interactions, and uh, make that data available to you in a uh, a reasonable, uh, a reasonably uh, straightforward and simple fashion, and it works primarily as an add-in to Outlook, and uh, within the Teams experience as well as you're chatting with, or emailing uh, your your customers or contacts, uh, it'll track that information, present it to you, you can see your past interaction with it, and there's a short video on that that we're going to watch. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. And I hope the sound works the way I'm wanting it to. Oh, maybe let's do this another way. That's awfully slow. All right, have you guys got the audio of that? Getting head shakes from Kip. Hold on yeah, just we one are second. Not getting the audio on that. Let's try this. There you go again. How about now, Nathan? Data yeah, we got it. Updating the CRM. Good job. They require data entry, lots of data entry. You don't want to do it. Managers don't want to remind you to do it. And it all seems to push the sale further and further away. Microsoft's about to change that. I'm listening. Introducing Microsoft Viva Sales, a seller experience application designed to get sellers out of the busy work and in front of customers. It fundamentally transforms the way you interact with your CRM. Using the applications you know and love, you can get back to what you enjoy, which means less churn and better results. Now, whenever you interact with a customer on Office 365 and Teams applications, that customer engagement is automatically captured and updated in customer profiles. So you can stop collecting and start connecting. Let productivity soar and make the most of every customer exchange with detailed insights delivered to each interaction. Afterward, make sure to keep the ball rolling with AI-driven follow-through suggestions and reminders. It's like having a digital personal assistant help I just want to pause here for a second. This meeting summary is one of the coolest features of Viva Sales. As you have Teams meetings, uh, it'll transcribe the the conversation. It'll use machine learning to extract from that transcription uh, tasks and follow up items, 
and you can see uh, it tracks as the flow of the conversation. It'll have uh, you know the sentiment analysis where the you know was it someone upset? Was everyone positive? Was it neutral? Uh, it'll let you know how much you talked versus others talked in the meeting, and it'll give you an easy way to add tasks and come here. But this this meeting analysis and summary is one of the coolest features of uh, Viva Sales. I think it makes it uh, like really slick to. Uh, you don't need to distract yourself taking notes. You've just got it all right there for you. All the follow up items you need. You can go back to and skip back to different parts of the meetings where those commitments were, were made and hear the conversation around them and everything. It's really, really quite slick. So uh, I'll let it finish, but just want to point that out. Hoping you close the sale. And the best part? It's included in the Microsoft apps that you use every day. Now, there's nothing standing between you and your customer. And you can get back to doing what's most important. Crushing it. Supercharge your CRM. All right, so that's Viva Sales in a nutshell. Um, it is, uh, like I said, a separate add-on. We're going to discuss licensing now for a minute. Uh, it's this, this new module. All right, so for licensing, uh, Microsoft says uh, to get all four of your modules, and there's more than that now, you'll need a license for Microsoft 365 or Office 5, either E1, A1, G1, E3, A3, G3, E5, A5, G5, Microsoft 365 Business Basic, Business Standard, Business Premium, Exchange Online, Plan 1 or 2 um, to be eligible for Viva. So that gives you uh, some basic Viva functionality. And then uh, to add to that, you can purchase the Viva Suite license or individual a la carte items uh, to, to turn on insights, learnings, premium features, topics, engage, and goals. And then Viva Sales, like I said, is not included in that Viva Suite license. It's a, a separate add-on you've got to purchase. So uh, if you were to buy them individually, this is what that looks like. You go buy Viva Learning, Viva Insights, or Viva Topics for $4 a month. You get Viva Gold for $6 per user per month. Uh, Viva with Glint add-on is $12 per user per month, and then Viva Sales is $40 per user per month. Uh, and the Viva Suite rolls up a bunch of those into a reasonable price. It's uh, on sale right now through the end of the year. I believe January 1st, the price goes back up uh, to $12 a month, but right now it's, it's $9 per user per month. You can see everyone within Office 5 license essentially gets Viva Connections and Engage which we talked about engaged in connections is that kind of branded corporate experience, internet like experience within teams uh, and, and news feed roll up. And then uh, you get a little bit of access to learning, a little bit of access to insights. If you buy the Viva suite, you get full access to all the learning features. You can uh, recommend learning to clients. You can, or, or to, to coworkers or uh, direct reports. You can uh, monitor their progress. Um, you get Viva Insights, kind of full suite of features. You get access to Viva Topics and that full Viva Goals module that we uh, we looked at today. And then separate from all that, if you are interested in the Viva Sales module, uh, you can uh, purchase that and add that on uh, as well for $40 a month. So I'm going to leave some time for questions if there are any, but uh, the call to action would be if you're interested in any of these, if any of these have struck your interest and you, you want to look at them, uh, maybe between now and the end of the year, talk to your journey team account representative. We'd be happy to get with you and see if these are a good fit for you, help you deploy them if needed, and get, get you uh, going on some of these uh, employee experience tools that Microsoft has provided to help make all of your employees uh, more productive and make their work more enjoyable. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to questions for a few minutes, and uh, if there are any, I'd be happy to answer them. If there aren't, then uh, you'll get a few minutes of your day back. Does Syntex integrate with Viva? Uh, I don't think there's a direct integration that I know of. So no, I, I, I don't think so. They're complementary uh, in ways, but I don't think they integrate directly together. Good question though.
Any other questions? Vern, I'm curious, was there a particular use case you were you were looking for, hoping for, trying to achieve with Syntex and Viva? OK. Yeah, they're, they're complementary in ways, but, but they don't integrate directly together, but they can be used collaboratively. Yes. AI and machine learning is in getting in everything. That's uh, the, the real key behind a lot of this Viva technology, the Graph API, and now uh, SharePoint Syntax as well. All right, I'll leave it open for a couple more minutes, 30 questions, but but if not, uh, we'll wrap up early. Yes, thank you, Brent. Appreciate everybody for attending. Right, give Brent a round of applause. Did a great job. Um, and and Vern, we could always probably get back to you. I'll look it up too and see if there's any more information we could share with you. Um, so that way we do some follow up, but just a kind of a friendly reminder. Please fill out the survey. We'll post it again in the chat. And then if you are local here in Salt Lake, we are hosting an event at Top Golf down in Murray. Please come out and please mingle with our other clients and some of our staff here at at Journey Team. But again, thank you for everybody who attended. Please, um, if you if you need any services, please feel free to reach out and we'd love to be of service. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Appreciate your attendance and uh, hopefully this was a good use of 45, 50 minutes of your time. Thank you very much.